This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby doing the Hercules build number seven. We're starting out by enlarging the holes in the servo arms so that the push rods will fit through. I actually drill them out uh, so that if I break a horn I can reverse it in at the field and not have to go find a new horn. And then using my square I mark where uh, these the horns are going to be in the elevons. Now taking an X-Acto knife, I make a slit in the EPP elevon, and then I use my soldering iron and actually punch a small hole, mostly just so glue can flow up around that horn. I now make sure that the horn I want is in the right place. I want the front of that horn right along the hinge line. And then after drying the bottom of the horn on the base, I take my soldering iron and cut it out so that the horn will uh, poke through so that the entire top head of the horn pokes out of the top of the wing. If it doesn't poke out, you don't have enough leverage. Here's number two that I'm going to show you. I draw around it, cut out, put the horn in, make sure it comes up far enough, put some glue underneath, clean up a little bit, put a little glue on both sides. Amazing how strong that is and how fast it is to put those horns in. I then take a pin and pin it in place so that it holds it up and it can't slide back down. And then after they've cooled, I make sure that they're glued well on the bottom. Now I'm just uh, putting the screws in to hold the motor mount in place. You can scoot that motor in and out as far as you need to to get it to position right. We're now making the skid. Just take an ordinary pot bottle, cut the plastic, and this is just uh, household goop. And I use a stick of some sort and spread the glue out across the bottom of the skid. Plastic is extremely slick and easy to come by. Lasts pretty good. And then using some rubber bands, I hold it in place. And now I'm going to take, I'm using just tongue blades here, but I, it, sometimes it helps to put some, something up so that the rubber bands don't tear into the foam while it's setting. Now uh, it's going to cure during this picture right here. Boy, that was fast. Now it's all set. And I'm going to trim the edges. Trim off the excess pop bottle that's there. And then I use my iron turned way up on a high temperature and round the edges of the uh, pop bottle that's there. And then I laminate the skid. Find the exact place I want the skid, make a mark. Now I'm going to use my soldering iron again and punch my 10,000 holes of paint. Make sure you don't punch your receiver that's up there. And what I'm going to do is force glue down through all those holes so that it will uh, help to glue the skid onto the bottom of the plane. Sometimes we use Velcro. And Velcro works good, you do the same thing, except you glue Velcro down and then uh, instead of just gluing the skid straight on, but the Velcro adds a lot of weight. And you also have to put a back strap on the skid along with the front. But just make sure you've got enough that you'll make good contact. And then press the skid firmly in place. Work it in, get it so those, that glue really gets that uh, skid glued on with and pushes it to glue down the hole. Then I take some tape and I leave this tape on. I don't take it off after it's set. I leave that tape right there and it helps to keep the skid from being knocked off in a hard landing. I'm now putting the easy connectors on the uh, Elevon horn. Just pop them through, put the snap ring on, put the push rod through, and uh, put the screw into the body of the easy connector. I'm not going to tell you, but on that other side I kept dropping the screw. Now I'm checking to make sure that the servos are moving. And now I'm going to glue the servos in. You want to glue them in firm enough that they're not going to come out with an accident. And if you need to get them out, I just use a blow dryer or my heat gun and gently warm them until it softens up and pull them out. I don't have any trouble getting the servos back out even though they're glued in. Now I'm going to set the elevons 
in position. And if you look to the center, you can see that they're just barely up from the uh, center piece, uh, which would be straight. Now I decided that was too much movement, so I'm going to move the push rod in on the servo arm to the second hole out. I had it on the four, fourth hole out, because I don't want them to move that much. Uh, these, these elevons are so big that if you have them move too much, they'll stall the plane. Now on the rudder, uh, which I have painted since you saw it last, um, I just punch a whole bunch of holes down the wing, just uh, like I did on the skid. Put some glue down the bottom of the coroplast and along the hole. Then make sure it's all square and let it cool. Let's do the other side. Make a string of holes. Double check to make sure that how far out I need to go. Then I glue the holes. And you notice I put extra glue where the, uh, the pins go that uh, help to stabilize it. You also notice that the horns are on in the, towards the middle of the plane where the servo is. Then I square it up. Using an iron, I now flatten all the laminate. And then I put just regular adhesive tape over the seamway so that if I need to get those servos out, I just pull a piece of tape and I have access to the slot again. I can do that at the flying field, by the way. I'm now going to put a staple in the middle of the push rod in order to keep it from flexing when it moves. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on these rods. You notice I put the staple in and give it a little twist just at the very end. But I put some glue in the hole, drop the staple in and twist it. it does really well on keeping the push rod from moving side to side or up and down. I'm now using goop on the wing tip. The uh, goop will stick to the laminate. And then using the tape, I put the fin on, giving it two different ways of connection there. And this reinforced tape does a good job of holding the fin on. Either the glue or the tape will work, but considering this, these fins are also acting as landing gear, and the back skids on the plane when it's in the grass, make it so they're very secure. You can see how a little paint sure brightened them up from when I was cutting them in the previous video. See how the tape works. This is the holographic tape, which uh, there's a link for on our website. Um, you can see how that tape really dresses up the plane, and it's very bright in the air, catches the sun well. We're now going to do a pre-flight check. Look how much the elevons are moving. Most people have them move way too much. That's full throws right there. And it doesn't take very much on a plane with elevons this big to make the plane aerobatic. Look at the motors, the way the speed controls are. I will bury the speed control in the plane by cutting a tunnel underneath that front spar after I'm sure that everything's working. That's a 9.6 prop on a 1400 35 motor. Look how the batteries are sitting. Any wire that's up though will disrupt airflow and cause drag on the plane. You also notice I have an accessory receiver uh, out from the primary receiver to give me longer range for this great big plane. This is the end of the building videos. I hope that this has helped you understand the instructions and uh, give you some confidence as you build your plane. Uh, look at the flying videos and you'll see this plane even on its maiden flight. Thank you again for watching and enjoy your plane. Happy flying.